So the mountain, October 25th, CISG 114, Sanction 2, Web Technology and Life. This is the second day in week number 6, day number 12. So let's get started. So welcome back, good afternoon today for this day number 12 into the semester of CISG 114, Section 2. If you look at the theme for this week, we have to deal with RSS, podcasting, social bookmarking, mesh ups, and virtual office applications. And of course, uh, we are going to cover some of these in a sense that we're going to do some investigations, discussions of some of these. And before I start, let me remind you, you should have sent me an email, if you prefer, telling me the formations of your team comprising two pairs, okay? If you choose to reduce your workload in a second learning contract. Now, if you have not sent me the email, make sure if you prefer to reduce your workload, send me the email before midnight tonight, okay? If you do not send an email when I release the uh, formations for teams, that means your peer has to do all the work in a second learning contract, all right? So this is the final reminder. And then today, today, we're going to give you the time we are going to give you the time to do team-based discussions if you have already had the team form, okay? That means, that means you need to, you need to do in-class discussions and based on which you're going to write up your second meeting minute. Next week will be the last week because next week will be the um, the, the arrival of November the 1st. Uh, theoretically, is the day when you have to submit your learning artifacts. But remember, you will have five days more, okay, to November the 6th, okay, which will be the last step nine. So make the best use of your time. Having said that, let us get started. Each one of you fold an A4 piece of paper into an A5. We are going to go through quite a number of topics today. Remember, for this winter sharing, we do have two pairs, I guess. I'm going to check in a minute. So I'm going to give the microphone to the two pairs to the sharing at 3.05, okay? And then let me remind you, when you do the sharing of this week, your topic must be selected from the readings for week number five. And then those of you, this is very important because I happen to forget it, but you have to know it. From the very beginning of the semester when you look at this website for each learning contract, if you need teacher center help, that means I believe I need some more help in order to get through my learning, you are highly encouraged to visit a link called Learn and Practice for Learning Contract Number Two. And the same for learn and practice for learning contract number one because those are very important things okay for you to study all right now we do have a table over there uh, so you might pull that table get two chairs okay and that will be good enough so let us get started and please do not forget a very important resource here the learn and practice for learning contract number two because that is designed to help you who do not feel comfortable enough to transition into this kind of discussion-based learning. You still want a teacher-center approach and go to that lane. Everything you need, it's already there, all right? So if you do not make the best use of that, well, try to visit the lane uh, before the end of the second learning contract. So let us get to the web. Okay, we talk about the web. What is exactly is a World Wide Web, all right? So, and then I'm going to play you a very soft video as a review on what exactly is a World Wide Web, and followed by another video which is telling you the differences between the web. Okay, message from Comic-Con. This video comes in versions designed for use in training and 
education. Find them at commoncraft.com. We have you ever wondered, when you visit a website, where those words and images come from? This is the World Wide Web in plain English. These days, as long as we have an internet connection, using the web is pretty easy. We can visit billions of pages on things from pet alligators to the weather in Holland. To help figure out how it works, let's pretend we can get really small, follow the wires, and explore what makes the web work. In order to get to the web, we need a connection from our home or business to the rest of the online world. This usually happens through the phone or cable lines, or even satellite. This connection means that information from around the world can reach our computers. If we can see the connection, the information coming through it would look like little packets of code. It doesn't make sense to most people. We need a translator, something that turns the packets of code into words and images we see on a website. For this, we use a web browser. It translates the information and makes it useful to us. But that code has to come from somewhere, right? If we could follow it to its home, we'd see that it's coming from another computer. Not a regular computer, but one that's built to make web pages available. It's called a server. The words and images that appear on our screen live here in the server. If there was only one server, this would be simple. But there are millions of servers and web pages. We need a way to find a specific page on a specific server. We do this with web addresses. Each server and website has a unique one. As long as we have the right web address, we can visit a page on any server on the web. The reason we call it a web is that all the servers are connected. We can easily jump from one to the other using addresses via our web browser. And we don't have to remember all the addresses. Web pages use shortcuts or links. Words and images we can click that direct us to page after page. These links create a web of connections that are easy to navigate. Together, this system makes up the World Wide Web. So, let's sum it up. To visit a website, we type in a web address or click a link. The information for the website lives on a server. It comes to us as little packets of code, and our web browser translates this code into words, photos, music, videos, and links that help us get things done. Yay! Yeah. I'm Leela Fever of Common Craft, and this has been the World Wide Web in plain English. Okay. Do you need this for work? Find presentation quality, unbranded versions of all Common Craft videos at commoncraft.com. You just got a very brief overview on what exactly is a World Wide Web for three minutes. So would you please spend two minutes individually to capture some of the core ideas behind watching this review video on what is meant by a World Wide Web. Just some ideas, okay? Do not worry about this right or wrong, we're not going to judge you, but capture some ideas. Because traditionally speaking, this is called notes taking two minutes. Okay, before I give you another video, two minutes. Oh, of course, yes, if you prefer to talk with your partner, feel free to do it in that two minutes. We will not fall from here again. What exactly is the world of drawing that? Yes, you can come to join the stage because your partner is not here. Thank you. Let me pull the chair. It's okay. What they say about the world wide web. You have exactly two minutes time to capture the idea before we continue with the second video.
EBM, the Dutch think tank on the impact of information technology, approaches Web 3.0 from various points of view and draws attention to its implications for society. So here we go. We got about four minutes time for introductions from the worldwide graph that we're experiencing today, that actually in the past, to the future of the worldwide web, which is very much characterized by, if you look at the video. So may I just give you not more than five minutes time to organize your findings from the first video to the second video, and discuss your findings with your table papers, and see what conclusions, or better say, learning, can you extract from these two videos, okay? It's not more than one to two important sentences, and then some key ideas, so it's very important. Um, very good, yeah. You have two pairs here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yes. So think about this. Um, whatever you do, when you walk into a cinema to watch a movie, at the end of watching, you will have some thinking about the movie. So at the end of watching a new story, you have some thinking about this. Now at the end of watching this two video, with respect to World Wide Web, what exactly is your thinking? Start from that, okay? Start from that. Yes. Wow, I see you've got something very cute. Are you going to give this to your girlfriend? <laughs> So think about it, it's, it's very exciting. Well, 3.0 is what we call the future web. It's uh, characterized by what? Okay, by what?
different among members in your team. Now that you have another peer joining you at your table, it's very good. Do you have a team pair? Yes. Yeah. Where, where are they? Okay, you might just go ahead and join them or invite them to join you to share the ideas together if you want. Yes, because it's very useful when you help two other people to help you discuss about the details. Okay? Do you have a team here? Now, let me remind you, if you do not have a team here for the second learning contract, you will not have the work that we do. So make sure you can find your team here. Oh, right here. Okay, that's good enough. All right? Make sure you send me an email informing the team here. All right? Very good. I can see that you know how to make the best use of human resources now. You can just join one another and start your team-based discussion. Very important. Try to figure out the ideas first, what is entailed in the World Point Web. The second is the evolution from the World Point Web 1.0 to where we are in 2.0, and then subsequently to what they call 3.0. Alright? It's very important. Yes, have a seat, because we've launched it. In the meantime, I'm going to take attendance first. Koki? Koki, are you here? Yeah. Thank you. Tiago? Thank you. Kalai? Thank you. Cecilia? Yes. Juliana? Yes. Yatla? Thank you. Yen? Thank you. Kay? Thank you. Jason? Thank you. Hita? Thank you. Josh? Thank you. Joma, thank you. Karen, thank you. Lysandra, thank you. Saviro, thank you. Ladia, Ladia, absent today, right? Ji Hin, thank you. Yok Ling, Yok Ling, thank you. Wing, thank you. Mario, thank you. Joe, yes. Jerry, thank you. Kenny, not here. Richard, thank you. Davy, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just my best use of our time. Okay, now allow me to give you a little bit more hints on Web 3.0. I'll give you another four minutes time to help you to organize your material. Make sure you make the best use of these very important video. Okay? Four minutes. Being a world of numerous advances in technology is not an easy task. But fortunately, during the next few minutes, you will take crucial information on one of the biggest upcoming revolutions, the Web 3.0, as well as great tips on how to be aware of the newest upcoming technology. But what does all this web nonsense have to do with me? You might ask yourself. Well, you would actually be surprised. Just take a look around. You'll be able to find a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone reset, or even all of them. Just tell me, what will you do if all your Facebook information gets lost, or if somebody steals your email password? I would go crazy! Currently, information is not just a bunch of bits anymore, it's actually becoming an extension of ourselves. So, what is the Web 3.0? The Web 3.0 is the upcoming web revolution, the semantic web. A personalizable place with intelligent search and behavioral advertisements where content is generated by machines rather than by humans, where virtual items or information become more valuable than physical items, where we'll get a twin to tell us if our processing time, or even if our food is going out of date in the fridge. Yo, 
oh, does that mean that the web has been evolving? Exactly. Remember many years ago, when Google just launched, YouTube was just coming out, and MSN Messenger used to be the thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Well, those were part of the first web generation, or web 1.0. The web then began to evolve into a much more dynamic web. Technologies like RSS, Ajax, and SNL started coming up. Content management systems were replaced by wikis. Blogs became more common than diaries, and social media became an essential tool for every single individual, creating what we now know as the web 2.0. Currently, innovative technologies like the Google Class project, augmented reality, and advanced mobile technologies I would make this third generation of web possible. Wow, where can I get this web 3.0? You actually interact with several web 3.0 technologies every day. Smartphones, for example, are one of the biggest factors in this revolution. Incredible 4G speeds, retina displays, and technologies like cloud computing improve the web experience massively. Studies have even shown that people are tending towards using their smartphone or tablet more than their actual computers. We can even see this revolution in computers. Take Windows 8, for example, which is trying very hard to adapt to the tablet market. Web 3.0 also allows a thing we call hyperconnectivity. What this really means is that everything is starting to be interconnected through the internet. There are already twice as many devices connected to the internet than people in the world, and it is set to increase to 6.5 per person by 2020. That sounds amazing! Hey, and can my business benefit from all this? Definitely! Businesses benefit from the web 3.0 in numerous ways. They're not only discovering new novel ways of using social media for marketing, but they're making use of technologies such as Ruby Rails, Python's Django, and Hadoop to scale their businesses massively through the internet by selling software as services instead of as products. So, what you're saying is that the web 3.0 is perfect? As you might know, nothing can be perfect. With many new technologies coming up, powerful model and harmful software comes along. The web is advancing so fast that some security protocols are not catching up, leaving loopholes which hackers can then exploit. Also, with the massive increase in value of virtual information, there is also an increase in concern, as its protection becomes much more crucial for everyone. All this is great! But how can I keep myself aware of the latest upcoming technology once this video is over? Don't worry, there are numerous ways to achieve this. Feel free to visit our site at web3.hackasultan.com where you will find more information on the web 3.0 as well as its technologies, its influence in mobile systems, business and security, as well as very useful links to tech news, blogs and videos. Thank you very much for your time and wish you an amazing day. Okay, now you got a little bit more ideas of what it's entailed in Web 3.0. Remember, you have two minutes more to capture the idea on this video and then three more minutes to discuss with your members of Taylor. In other words, now you're five minutes time. Two minutes on your own, three minutes on your table talk. Try to connect the ideas in free videos and produce a picture which could enable you to describe the web as it is today, it's going to be in the future, and where it had been in the past. Okay? You should remember some examples described in the video.
now let me just start discussing with the members in your table. Two minutes are gone now. We have three more minutes for this discussion. the same videos many, many times. And you can also watch other videos to match up their ideas. So it does not matter how incomplete your picture now it is, because it's your process of understanding it. Okay? Okay, uh, may I invite the table of boys over there to start sharing with us? Yes. Okay, yes, your table. Introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Yes, you try to turn that on. Maybe you can use my microphone. Yeah. Thank you. And after we thank the next video, I think Web 2.0 is about transmission. It's for the computer transmit transmission that this computer transmits some information to the other computer. Okay. And the others web 3.0 transmission is for the mobile phone. Mobile phone? Yeah. So as iPad, smartphone and but it's not perfect I think. For example and um, so, uh, in the computer, some information be stored, and I think it's very common when I use carefully. Okay, I am trying to suggest that Web 2.0 is the transmissions of data among computers, and Web 3.0 concerns with the transmissions of data among smartphones. Okay? All right, any other additions your member would like to add? Do you have anything more to add from your members? GPA. GPA? <laughs> GPS, right? <laughs> <laughs> the GPS system, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, could you pass the microphone to one table of the choice? Yes. Thank you. So it's Joe and Ga Yang, right? <laughs> yes. Joe, are you going to tell us something? Um, well, we think that the web three point zero is the English of the web two point zero. Okay. Web two web two point zero is a bit I direction. And a social media. Social media, yes. Uh, the workshop and the web of 3.0 is beginning by the by using the phones and the tablets. Okay. Um, they could they could actually replace a computer uh, and maybe maybe pass a computer. Yes. If you, uh, maybe in the future they can uh, we can use this internet by using the what the refrigerator or using the washing machine and we can um, we think it's okay it's okay just try to get your ideas of course it's all right uh, uh, well in that conclusion we think that web 3.0 is actually starting to happen right now by uh, different practices for, uh, of the technology that we are using right now Okay, can you give an example of those technologies uh, that is included in Web 3.0? Actually, you can use your phone to sometimes turn on the, turn on the light or making ice cream with your phone. Okay, that means before you go home, you can actually use the phone to control the appliances at home 
like turn on the light or turn on the air conditioner. Yes. Okay. What about GPS that suggested by the table over there? Uh, Is it the kind of uh, technology included in Web 3.0? I think uh, using uh, GPS in the Web 3.0 can actually help you to find the uh, it can tell you if there's some nearby or something that you can use nearby. Okay. I, I think it's interesting to know your answers like this. Could you pass the microphone to one table of the choice? Thank you, Joe. Yes. Yes, you need to pass the microphone because we do not have enough microphones here. You want to get past the ladies' table, right? Okay. Here we go, we come to this table. This help us to understand more about your interpretations. Hello. Hello, I'm I'm Yahoo. The and Yahoo? the the Beatles tell us the web web on zero. Yes. Um, is one difficult in knowing the uh, definition or negative for the evolving web and Three point zero is take of the clear and this the take of the clear and definition of the web two web two one three. Um, um, web uh, uh, three point zero as a marketing term, a marketing term. Okay. Most people agree what uh, the web two point zero is um, in the and social web uh, speculating um, collabo collaboration between people uh, and this and uh, this uh, this app is used uh, very easy and and this uh, translates the code to the world uh, picture, picture or video uh, it's, it's like the movie and it, it is great in social, but not as um, compre comprehensive as this uh, Excel con compact. Okay. Still, it is a lot simple, takes time and can be to decide, and it is loaded with color and notch. So? And so, um, it is popular and probably and probably that we will be using the term web 3.0 in the future. Okay, if I were to ask you to name one thing that will be possible in web 3.0, but it's not so visible in web 2.0, what would that particular example would be? Uh, for example, the... Yes. About uh, Facebook, about yes, in other apps, apps, uh, yes, and this they, is yeah. very um, popular. They, yeah, they talk about intelligence, right? Yes. So um, we know that the Web 2.0 today is very good for, as you mentioned, collaborations, helping people exchange ideas over the web, right? Yes. But idea exchange may not be intelligent enough. So they say in the Web 3.0 era, the web is actually called a semantic web. That means it contains a lot of intelligence. For example, if I'm new to Macau, I want to go to the Web 3.0 service and ask the specific server which restaurant is the best in Macau? Under <coughs> what criteria? I think mean, now we cannot have an answer like this. Because that has to be done based on a lot of feedback, right? But they say, in the future, Web 3.0 can actually offer things like this. Because of what? Because of, uh, they talk about the big analytics data. W what does it mean? It means, if I'm a customer visiting a particular restaurant, at the end of my eating, I can actually go to my uh, computer to, to say give a rating of the of the restaurant, and all the restaurant will have rating. 
with by all the customer who came to visit every day. So I just need to visit the web 3.0 and go to the ratings uh, screen and I could see the rating of a particular restaurant and based on the rating I could say, oh yes, it's, it's a good restaurant because a lot of people will say that. So that is the basis, something like intelligence. Thank you very much, Diario. Could you pass the microphone to one table of the choice? Thank you very much. So it's David and Jason. Okay, Jason. Yes, turn that on. Yes, sorry. I think Web 2.0 set to move beyond more questioning of content by allowing the user to become part of the process through collaboration and group participation exactly. and two-way communication, active environment, and blogging. Right. And the difference between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 is that Web 3.0 is depend on Web 2.0, and according to according to Conrad Warren and computer scientists, <coughs> and more devices become connected to the web, such as smartphones, cameras, and other household appliances. The internet will be set free and become only present. You must will be able to exchange data between each other from all the world and even generate new information. Very good. You, you, you hit the point. Very good. Yeah. And of the course, the internet will be able to perform tasks faster and more efficient. Yes. Thank you, Jason. You, you got it very, very put in praise. All what we expect is the intellect of things devices, appliances, cars, even my clothes will be recognized where it is if I happen to lose it. Thank you very much. Uh, very good. Uh, could you pass the microphone to the table next to you? Yes. Yes. Help us to understand more about your interpretations. Hi, Miss Sandra. Hi. Um, so before web Web 1.0, so that was the time when uh, Facebook and YouTube just started, and now we're using Web 2.0, where those websites have already evolved and have already um, gained an audience, which is the common population of the world, and uh, they are more connected now through social media sites that have already developed. And then in the future for the web 3.0, it's also known to be the semantic web because as you said, it's smarter and it, incre it increases connectivity because everyone would have these um, social media accounts like what's going on now, but these will increase which leads to hyper connectivity. And, um, but the, the bad thing is this development of Security is a problem because security can catch up with all this um, sharing of data, so then um, it's a risk still. And we're actually experiencing Web 3.0 now through our smartphones because of the 4G speed and the upcoming Google Glass, which is a part of the semantic web. That's very good. You brought up the issues of security. That is a very important issue in Web 3.0 and also today is true. Thank you very much, Lysandra. Could you pass me the microphone? Okay, let's return to the tables in front. Kara's uh, table, could you help us to understand your table's interpretation? No, no battery. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, our group want to share. Um, as we, uh, we we know server server yeah. <laughs> we know server uh, is a a store or a process. It's a um, 
is a part of a computer network which does a particular task, for example, storing or processing information. And then, um, uh, after we have server, we can go to the internet and many genius, genius, uh, yeah, many genius invent a lot of te uh, internet technology for us. Um, uh, the first one, uh, and then we can use, uh, we can apply this technology in our life. And uh, the first one is Web 1.0. Um, and uh, for example, MSN or RCQ. And then the second one is 2.0, uh, just like Facebook. And then we think uh, 2.0, uh, this uh, Web 2.0 is almost uh, the technology is only present in and almost always and everywhere available. But um, the third one, Web 3.0, is coming soon revolution. It's a coming revolution. And it's okay. It's okay. Sorry. And then we think uh, Web 3.0 is inch by inch. Uh, the, uh, uh, the internet technology is in by inch improved. And then the website and the internet technology is bigger, is, uh, is uh, better. And, and then we think machine using rather by a human in a web 3.0. And then, uh, but at the same time, uh, we, uh, the video also, uh, also remind uh, the risk of private and security also getting higher. Yeah. Okay. So the internet technology can be improved and the the opposite side can be also higher. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I apologize for the microphone. Okay? So I think it's now time to turn the microphone to the two pairs who is going to share with us today. Let me just go to the discussion forum to see who the two pairs.
Our web blog shows the rapid advancement of information technology, which has gained high popularity all over the world. It is a part of the multimedia era, playing an irreplaceable role of the modern society. People share their daily life or professional blog writers post components of news on a blog with text, images, and links to other blogs, web pages, and other media related to its topic, which is, which is a typical blog. That is a part for daily applications. I will show the vlog for you. Uh, after you after the web page, you can click it and sign up. You can uh, enter your uh, private information and you can get a vlog. And this one, I have registered one uh, blog. It's pretty good, very good. It's a very convenient site. <laughs> yeah, this is the blog. And if you want to post something, you could click here and that view or uh, some uh, media um, and links. Um, yeah, I have uh, the uh, sorry media. Yeah, a photo, a, a picture of Kawa. Yeah, you can you can share uh, what happened or your what 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 you share with others. You can post it. Uh, on your blog. So let's continue. Thank you. Very good. So um, uh, as for the blog's benefits, uh, such as expressing individual emotions or ideas, making friends, and helping companies and governments promote information. Uh, however, in the meantime, blog uh, for it is digital causes some problems. Such as the spread of fake of fake information, that safety of information privacy or the ethical or law problems. So the uh, the curiosity and group psychology push something like blogs to the peak. So it's really popular the blog. I can be told as a fashion, of course. The path of information is more convenience. In my view, the points mentioned above contribute to the popularity of blog. As for the problems, uh, why ethical or law problems appear on blog? The less strictness of the law, uh, law, lack of awareness of information privacy, and some other reasons lead to the problems of blog as appearing in the field of information technology. That's really good. So for the applications, how can we make better use of what? Uh, first, the government should build a awesome system of internet law, and more importantly, urge relevant departments to take actions. Uh, second, also for the government, it can help solve matters about the problems of internet, which are expected to raise the aware, uh, awareness of the public. Finally, for us, individual, uh, we should be careful when we help you to write blogs, not break the law and pay attention to the intelligence property. Uh, thank you, that's all. That's very good. Thank you very much. I think you did a very good job because it helps us to understand the idea of box, walking it through observations, interpretations, and applications. Please make sure you upload your PowerPoint next to your uh, sign-up forum 
thread, okay? If you go back to the discussion forum, you can upload it, okay? Just write a response and upload it, okay? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. So Thank everybody you. can take a look at your work. So David, is your pair the next one? Could you go there? Do you need the, uh, oh yes, USB, just go over your hat and install it over there. Thank you very much. And um, very good presentations and sharing. Sometimes not. 
Um, in any case, this is not uh, the efficient way to do it. Uh, the better way is to use RSS feeds, um, which makes sure that the information from the different sites you want to um, follow comes to you. Um, the only thing you need is a Google uh, is an RSS reader, and I use Google Reader for two reasons: uh, one, it's for free, and two, you can access it from every computer um, as long as you have um, internet. And I will show you how it works. You go to Google, you enter um, Google Reader, you click on the first uh, result, you log in with your Google account. And here we go. Um, this is my Google Reader. It uh, looks like a, an email program. Uh, here are all my uh, unread um, RSS feeds. Here are my subscriptions to the sites I follow. And uh, what you do is um, you go to your favorite uh, website or uh, blogs that you want to follow. Uh, I'll demonstrate it on my blog, The Work Experiment, where so you can find, by the way, uh, more useful tools and tips how to live and work efficiently. If you look for the uh, RSS feed logo once you came to the website, in my case it's here. You click on the logo, you copy the information that is in it, you go back to your um, Google Reader, click on Add a Subscription, and paste uh, the information from the site there, you edit, and here we go. This is um, the information from um, the site I just added that I haven't read yet. If you click on this um, latest um, RSS feed, uh, you see a summary, and if you want to read more, you click on continue reading and you are redirected. Um, to the site in question. So, that was um, what I wanted to tell you about RSS. I hope uh, you liked it. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see more... Um... Okay. Do you have anything to add to your sharing? That's a conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much. David, your group has given us a fresh understanding of RSS. Uh, I know you've done a lot of work, done a lot of details, and your video is very good. Thank you. Make sure you upload your PowerPoint also to the uh, public forum discussion. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Now, may I just invite you to come back to the discussions among each table. Now that uh, I hope you're putting together as a team, and each team has two pairs, and that is the team who is going to do the work in secondary contract, right? So spend 10 minutes time to discuss about how you go about to get the job done. Because you're in principle, you're fewer than one week's time to get the job done. So it's very important that you have a good discussion and put it down as your meeting minutes, okay? So this is your time for discussion. So your question definitely can ask me. Just raise your hand. I will be at your table. Yes.
So that's it for today's CASG 114 Section 2 Web Technology Live. I love this class very much. Students ask you a lot of questions. Until next week, week number seven. Stay tuned.